Home butchery might seem like an incredibly daunting thing to do, but I'm going to show you with a few little tips and tricks that actually it's quite achievable at home and can be quite fun. The first thing that you've got to look for is a quality standard bit of lamb. This is what we've got here. It's a nice leg. If you look at it, it's got a lovely bit of fat covering onto it. That's what you want. And also it's a nice dark red colour. That's something that's good to look for. What we're going to do today is we're going to butterfly it. Basically means we're taking the bone out and that makes it a perfect joint for doing on a barbecue on a hot warm day. What we're going to do is we're going to tie it up and it makes a lovely lamb roasting joint. It's really easy, so let's get started. First thing we need to do is just turn the leg over. You need a sharp knife. This is where all butchering starts, is with a sharp knife. If you haven't got one, it makes it very difficult. If you've got a knife and you need to give it a bit of a sharpen, what you need is a steel. Now, what we're actually doing when we're doing this is we're just straightening the blade. And you just do that by just rubbing it at a 2% angle, and that just gives the edge back onto it. This bit of lamb here is about two kilos. Now, that's going to feed probably about six to eight. But what you've got to bear in mind is once you've taken the bone out, it's going to reduce in weight. And I recommend about 100 grams per person of raw meat. So by the time that's cooked, and some of the moisture's come out, it's gonna be about 70 grams, which is about perfect. And also the other thing you remember is all the leftover little bits, don't waste them. First of all, we're gonna take the shank off. So what you wanna do is you wanna just give the bone a little wiggle. And the thing with meat is that it's all about feeling it, you know, you don't wanna be shy about it. And uh, you wanna know where you're cutting. And we're basically going through the, uh, the knee joint here. So we just take our knife and we just kind of find it. Wiggle your way in and you'll see that it starts to open up. Once you've kind of got through that little bit there, then we're just gonna pull a line across now you want to cut your shank as a, a good size, but you want to leave more of it on the leg because that's the good bit really. So we'll just take a nice angle and we'll just cut across and hopefully it'll just come off in one nice piece. So there we've got our lamb shank. So he's perfect for pot roasting. So you would, you know, nice little sauce, a few vegetables, cook it for about an hour and 45 minutes. That's going to be delicious and tender. So we've taken that off. So looking at this bit of lamb here, you might be thinking, mm, there's quite a lot of fat in here. Don't worry, we're going to trim all of that off and we're going to be left with just lovely lean. We're going to have a bit of fat left on the outside. That's just going to keep it nice and juicy when we're cooking it. But all the gristly bits, they're all going to go. But none of it goes to waste, by the way. So the first thing we need to do is we just want to trim off this uh, kind of top layer of flare. So just taking your knife and just peeling it off. So we'll just trim through and always cutting away from yourself. You never want to, you know, slash into your belly. It never, never feels good at A&E. So just chuck that in there. This next stage is the most fiddly bit. What we're going to do is we're going to take out the H bone. And um, it's quite a kind of weird, awkward looking uh, bone. If it seems too daunting, just ask your butcher to do it. I'm sure he'll happily do it. So what we need to do is we just need to tease going into the top side off this top bit. If you stick by the bone, so keep your knife always on the bone, you're not going to be slashing into the precious meat. And then you just want to follow the knife going down, down this bone bit here. And then when you come to this bit here, you'll see the ball socket joint. We're going to have to kind of scoop inside there. So just using your knife, just tease it in. And then we just need to just tease this bit off the bottom. Same again, sticking nice and close to the bone. If you lose any bits, don't throw them away. They're perfect for putting into casseroles for later use or putting into your sauce or whatever you're making, a nice little gravy. Nothing goes to waste. So bring it around and then we're just gonna cut them off, scooping around that last little knuckle bone. So that's our H-bone taken off. That makes perfect stock for gravy. So now we've got our uh, H-bone taken out. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop out the, the thigh bone. This is quite an easy one. Just teasing the meat away from the bone as we did with the H-bone. Customers of mine often you know, say to me, they go, oh, I don't like lamb, it's so fatty. But actually, you know, lamb these days is nowhere near as fat as it used to be when our grannies used to have it. Just through, you know, kind of better farming techniques, but also butchering, you know, we, uh, we chop out all the internal fat, which is not the stuff that you want, but we just leave a little layer on the top, and that basically will self base but as it cooks, it melts off, ends up in the bottom of the tray, so you don't actually end up eating it. So, you know, this whole kind of perception that lamb's fatty is a bit of a myth, really. As we're getting around to the top bit, there's a little ball socket bit, and it's kind of like a double-ended one. We just need to chop that out. Being quite careful, trying to keep as little meat on the bone and as much on the leg. There you go. And then we take from the bottom bit, so stand the bone up, just kind of tease it out, sticking as close to the bone as possible. And there's a little kind of uh, knuckly bit. We just want to chop that out. It's easy if we get it out in one piece. There you go. So now we've got our lamb. All the bone's been taken out. What you want to do now is kind of just Feel over it and just check to see if there's any little bits of bone left in. So you don't want that. So there's a little bit of um, gristle there off the, off the H bone. Just trim that out. Now we're using a, a leg of lamb here, which uh, you might be thinking, oh, why can't I do that with a shoulder? Whereas if you think about a leg of lamb, it's at the, the back. The leg doesn't do as much work as the, as the shoulder does. So it tends to be the shoulder is better for slower cooking. It's good for kind of casseroles and slow roasting. Whereas the leg is, um, you know, it doesn't work quite as much and it's got more solid meat that doesn't have fat going through it. And that just means it's better for quick cooking and having it nice and pink. Right, so we've finished uh, all of our trimming. Now this is the bit where you could uh, put stuffing in it, you could put some marinades in it. 
I'm just going to season it with some nice salt and pepper. Good bit of sea salt, get it all in there. Good bit of crap black pepper. Now I really like uh, rosemary, I think it works really well with lamb. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay some through the middle like this. And that's just going to cook through it nicely. Right, so now we just turn it over like that. And then what we want to do is we just want to form it into a kind of leg shape. So you're kind of trying to get it nice and neat. And, uh, and now what we're going to do is we're going to tie it. You could use some uh, butcher's bands there, those kind of elastic bands that you kind of put on that you see at the butcher shop. You can cook with them, so don't take them off because it'll fall to bits. I'm going to use some butcher string. So this is quite easy. All you've got to do is loop it underneath, start in the middle, and then you're just going to make yourself a nice little slip knot, gentle pull, and pull it tight. Just cut off at the end. So as you start tying along, you can start to see the legs taking shape, and it's starting to look more like something you get from your butchers. So here we go, we've finished our uh, butterfly leg of lamb. It's a beautiful roasting joint, it's ready for the oven. Just a few quick tips about cooking in the oven. You wanna whack your oven up to like 220 degrees, hot as it can go, bit of oil, salt and pepper on the outside, put it in the oven for about 20 minutes. That's gonna give it a nice crust, get loads of caramelization. That's where all the flavor is. Turn the oven down to about 180, cover it with a bit of tin foil, and then I like mine quite, you know, kind of medium rare, so I would give it maybe an hour on top of that. You know, if you want it well done, give it an hour and 45 minutes. Take it out, give it that all important rest, and then get a nice sharp knife and give it a good carve. There you go, that's a beautiful bit of roast leg of lamb. Hopefully you've learned something today and that you're gonna feel inspired and go home and do that yourself. If you're still not feeling confident, you can go to our website, Simply Beef and Lamb, and they've got loads of top tips, they've got videos, they've got recipe suggestions, there's a whole load of stuff. Of course, if you'll still find it difficult to tell what a quality piece of lamb looks like, I recommend go see a butcher, Go to your supermarket meat counter and look for a quality mark. I always, when I'm there, look for the quality standard mark because it guarantees that it's going to be excellent eating quality and it's going to be tender, succulent. The quality standard scheme provides you with high levels of assurance about the meat you buy and it is independently inspected right from the farms that the meat comes from through to the shops and restaurants it is sold in. 